So those are the basic principles of space law, but there are other areas of international law that are also applicable, and I've already referred to some of those, but regulation of the electromagnetic spectrum. Who can use what frequency, for example, in, in outer space? There's also nuclear strategic agreements, which are uh, Russia and the United States, for example, saying we're not going to further develop our um, ballistic missile defense shield okay. if you don't develop your ballistic missile defense okay. yeah, shield. Yeah, yeah. All right. um, and when we have satellites that can spy on you yep. for the purposes of making sure you're complying. Yes. Um, so, so these are relevant. Then there's export control laws. The export control laws, the most well-known of those is the US International Traffic in Arms Regulations or ITAR. ITAR, yes. Yes. Um, and, and they say, well, actually, some of this space technology is sensitive yes. because if you can make a rocket, you can make a ballistic missile. That's right. And in fact, I mean, I think this is, again, been quite in the news recently with the Russian invasion in Ukraine they've outlawed or prevented some further sanctions on technology that harms the military, but directly also affects space technology as well. Right, right, right. So export control laws are uh, important. There are laws about liability and state responsibility that are outside the liability convention. So if you couldn't proceed under the liability convention, there's still the possibility of using other elements of international law. Yep. Um, environmental laws that could be applicable. Um, there's domestic laws of particular nations. So, you know, for Australia for, for the, the, our domestic laws, such as the Space Launches and Returns Act. So there's uh, all that stuff that we have to buy just in Australia before you can even right. go worry about the space things. Well, I exactly. And it becomes complicated because if you are wanting to put up a satellite, uh, it's, it's say manufactured in Australia and you want it to get, get it launched somewhere else, then you might have to get a permit from Australia, but you also have to get a permit from that other country where it's going to be launched. And then, as in our previous example, right, you know, if you're going to go launch from New Zealand, which happens quite a lot, you then have to, I guess, make sure that if New Zealand says, well, we're going to pass the liability on to you, that you then have to get, I guess, the Australian government to agree to that? Would that be the that's, case? That's right. So, And you're doing this as a private company just trying to set yes, your satellite up. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. So so there's there's potentially a network of laws with, with which you have to comply. Your satellite will want to speak to ground stations. Yep, yes. Those ground stations could be in a variety of nations around which, the world. Which they are, yeah. Um, so you're going to have to comply with the... Uh, uh, the the laws of other nations as well, where those ground stations are located. Interesting. Okay. Um, and that's that's also the case if you're going to want to send your signals. So Starlink wanting to provide yes. uh, satellite broadband around the world, mm. um, you're going to have to comply with those laws of of other states. Which is a lot if you're trying to do multinational broadband. Yeah. Right. And that's probably an aspect no one really thinks about, right? You just it's like the satellites there are great, all solved, but if you're getting that data down, which everyone needs to, so the law even factors into the communication aspect, which is, a, yes. I think, fascinating in a lot of ways. Yes, and I've already talked about law on yeah. the use of force by states and a little bit about law of armed conflict that, that's applicable. Hopefully, we don't have to use those laws too much, but, but they exist and it's important that they do exist. Yep.